Hi boys and girls, Mrs. Monroe here to read you a historical fiction book. Historical fiction means that the author did a lot of research and found out true events that happened in history and then decided to make up a story. Some things in this story could have happened, may have happened, but it's all imagined by the author. So the name of the book is Joshua's Diary, The Oregon Trail, 1848. I thought you'd especially like this book because this boy Joshua is about your age. So use your imagination and what he goes through at the time of the Oregon Trail is something that if you lived at this time, you might have had to make the same type of choices. So let's begin. St. Joseph, Missouri, 1848. That's the name of the town. This is written as a diary, so you won't see chapters, you'll see dates. March 1st, 1848. Pa is singing softly tonight. Does that mean we're going? I'm so excited I can't sleep. I lie in bed with my journal and pencil. A candle lights this page. The stars look in my window and wink at me. Do they know that I, Joshua, Martin McClure, may be sleeping under them? Do they know I might be going to Oregon? Pa's been begging Ma. He talks about free land and opportunity. Ma scrunches up her eyes at him. But has she finally said yes? And what about Grandpa? No, he won't go. That's why he gave me this journal. He wants me to write for him. It'll be awful hard to leave my Grandpa. My candles burn to a stub. I'll write more tomorrow. March 2nd. Pa sings softly. Ma's still quiet, but Ma's always quiet, yet something's different. This morning, Ma was in the kitchen and Pa walked by her and patted her bottom. She whispered, the children, but she smiled. I haven't seen her smile in weeks. Still, they don't say, and I don't ask. I don't want Ma to frown again. Charlie Granger, my cousin and good friend, wants to go, but his Ma, Aunt Lizzie, is like Ma. Last week, they were in our kitchen. Uncle Arthur kept pestering Aunt Lizzie like a fly in a ho- at a honeypot. She threw up her hands and said, Yes, if we all go together. Uncle Arthur looked at Pa. Pa nodded. They looked at Ma. Ma looked away. Pa said, What's holding us back? I know what's holding us back. Ma. March 16th. Pa told me about President Polk. Our president says we should spread our country ocean to ocean. A newspaper man in New York, John O'Sullivan, wrote that it's our destiny. He called it manifest destiny. Now everybody says those words. Ma says people are like parrots, repeating words they don't even understand. March 19th. This morning, Becky was coughing again. She coughed so hard her lips turned blue. Pa held her close. He spoke softly to Ma. I heard the words, clean mountain air. Ma didn't tell him to hush. She just sighed and nodded. Is this why she decided to go? If she's decided. March 20th. Today, Grandpa came by on his horse, Daisy. Grandpa has just one arm. Even so, he rides better than anyone I know. He brought me a sack of marbles. Before I could even thank him, he waved and raced out of the yard. Grandpa's my best friend. He knows my secrets. Like this one. Once, I almost drowned in the pond on his farm. He pulled me out. He breathed me back to life. But only he and I know of that. Only he knows I'm still scared of water. I'll miss him so bad. Later. Guess what? Charlie and Aunt Lizzie agreed to go, but she wants her feather bed, her bureau, her rocking chair, and everything. Uncle Arthur said yes. Today, he's off to buy the biggest wagon ever. Now Ma will say yes, she must. She couldn't bear to let her twin sister go without her. March 20th. Yes, this morning they told me we will go. What do you think? What do you think of Joshua? What's a character trait to describe him? And his mom, his pa, and his sister, 
cousins and grandpa? And what about you? Would you have what it takes to want to go on the Oregon Trail? So that's it for today. We'll probably have two or three more reading sessions to find out what happens. I hope you enjoyed the first part of this historical fiction.